Hey friends, hey, it's Monopoly Monday. Come on in, come on in at Cheryl with Mama P's Crafty Creations. I am a mess, I'm not ready. I'm not ready, but I'm here and we're gonna be ready. And if nothing else, it will be a testament to the fact that you don't have to be ready to craft. And we're just gonna go with that as our theme for the day. You don't have to be ready in order to craft. Mark that down. Hey, Christina, how are you, my friend? Hello, hi, Peggy. Hey, guys, hey. It is um, two degrees cooler than Hades here um, outside of Kansas City, Missouri this afternoon. I'm in the craft hut. Hey, Kendra, with the air conditioner blowing and a fan blowing, and we're just, we're gonna do our best. Hi, Jennifer, come in. Come on in, guys. Look at this. I mean, I'm always kind of a mess, but I feel like a big time mess today. Hey, Karen, hello. Okay, so I rushed home. Hey, Carrie, I didn't rush home. I came home from my daughter's house. Hey, Kathy, Kathy. Um, after doing some babysitting today. Hey, Chris, how are you? And I wanted to get um, here and I wanted to do our Monopoly Monday. And I thought, I'm just going to get home and I'm going to turn on the air conditioner out here to start cooling. And as soon as I sit down, I am, oh, good, good, good. Um, as soon as I get ready, I'll just hop on and we'll do this thing. Hey, Diane. And then, so I did just that. I put out the telegram that I was coming on in a few minutes. I went in the house. I sat down. Then I decided I better have something to eat real quick because when I babysit, I forget to do that. I don't know why I never forget it any other day. Um, and then I came out here and guess what I couldn't find? Hey, Linda, I couldn't find our Monopoly books. I could not find all the stuff that we've been working on. So then I was delayed while I dug. <laughs> Good grief. First of all, I want to show you guys, I got some happy mail today. I got some happy mail today. And as a newer lady around Facebook, it doesn't happen very often. It is so hot um, here in the craft hut. I'm going to rotate the little fan a little bit and I think I'll be fine. But um, anyway, we'll use that as, as an excuse. If things go bad, we'll just say it was because it was too hot. And anyway, hi, oh, it's hot in Alabama too. This is from Miss Christina Martin, who's here with us today. That is from you and I'm gonna open it right here, right now. I have not peeked. So let's see what I got in my happy mail. Wow, oh my goodness, Christina. What a bunch of goodies. Okay, all right, let's look at this. Look at this, Christina, thank you so much much. Maybe I'll find something in here to get real inspired with for today. I actually have a plan. I just couldn't find the stuff to do the plan. So <laughs> that's how it's going. Oh, these are so cute. Look at these little cards, you all. Look at them. She would have been perfect in my 1950s little book project that I did. And a construction guy and a princess. These are adorable. Christina. They're so cute. I love these. These are a project just waiting to happen just on their own. And I love that they open at the top like this. Thank you. Mm. I'm going to come up with something just for these. My mind is a clicking. And then look at all these, all these napkins. Hey, Miss Jimmy Lou. How's my friend today? This one, I just bought some... Is that teal or turquoise? I don't know. They're almost interchangeable in my mind. Um, pumpkin stuff. I'm loving that. Loving that. And this one. Oh, look at the sweet barn with the snow and the farm animals. Hey, Sydney, how are you? Another one. I love this. And I love this. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Betty. How are you? We're just flipping through some happy mail that Miss Christina Martin sent, and it came today. Look at this. This would make a stunning book cover. The way that it goes to the brown, you could blend that in. I'm doing really good, Miss Sydney, thank you. Oh, look at this fun Halloween like potion bottle. And the bird, ooh. And we have a heart-shaped napkin. I think these are so fun. And a Valentine hearts. Oh, look at the truck. Oh, but I love this one. Love, 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 love this one. This one would work with our Monopoly game. 
that one I'm gonna hold out. And then we have some gingerbread and snowman. And Christina, thank you, thank you. It is never ever necessary to send me a thing, even if I send you something, but thank you so, so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm going to leave this one out. I'm going to put it out of the fan air. Aren't they lovely, Dana? Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, you know that in the last couple of weeks, we've all been playing with the idea of altered trading cards or artist trading cards or altered playing cards. Call them whatever you like. Any of that works. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was fun. Um, so I think we're going to do something along those lines today to build some more ephemera for our book. Okay. I'm still saving this and we're still going to cut it up and make some things out of it. And I do intend to take the box apart and use quite a bit of it. But you can make an altered card out of any kind of card. It doesn't really matter. Um what the size is. Now, if you're trading them, it does kind of matter. They're about two and a half by three and a half or the size of a playing card. But if you're just making them for your journals and those kind of things, they're just whatever you decide you want them to be, right? So we could cut this up into size and we may do that. And then on the back, we could do our altered decoration. But I thought no matter what you might have, in your particular Monopoly game, you are gonna have these, <laughs> my little fan is melting in the heat, its little head is going <laughs> See if I can tighten it up a little bit. You're gonna have these property cards, right? So I have these and then, I also, if you remember that one day I got this huge bag of ephemera at the Scraps KC store and it also had some Monopoly type pieces in it. Um, so there were some community chests and we could make little altered cards out of these. I'm trying to remember, do you, anybody out there remember if there were property cards in here too? I don't remember there being um, any of them, but we have enough with our game that we're working on here. Okay, so. Let's play. <laughs> Let me see if I can turn that down a little bit so you can see a little bit more. So let's play with the whole idea of altered um, trading cards and build them on some of these Monopoly cards. I think it'll be fun and I think it'll be a way that we can do Monopoly theme and yet have some more traditional fun as well. So I'm gonna start with one of these. Thank you, Miss Susan B. I appreciate that. Hey, Sherry, welcome in. So we've got the community chest, the chance, and they're way up there too high. And we have the property card. Now, in this case, I'm gonna leave this side and then I think we'll decorate back here. And since it was so hot, I moved everything over here. So there's no telling how many times I may have to move around to find what we need here. But I just happen to have a little scrap of dictionary page here. And if you've been around me long enough, hey Mary, um, at all, you'll know that if I'm gonna do any kind of a mixed media type collage, I just have to cover the whole stinking thing. Once it's covered, I am good to go, but until it's covered, man, I will kind of struggle. So everybody's got their style and that's just the way I roll. So I'm just gonna glue this down. Hi Lisa, how are you? And I'm just going to put that down just to cover the whole thing, All right? And then I'm going to grab some pair of scissors here out of the jug, and I'm just going to trim it off around the edges. And like I said, then that seems to free me up in my silly head enough that I can go ahead. And I was watching a few videos today of altered uh, playing cards or artist trading cards. Everybody calls them something different. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you. And they were Mod Podging on tissue or napkin. So let's try and see what we get when we decoupage a napkin onto this card on top of the book page we already put on. Okay. 
And I think this red pattern one is perfect. Just perfect. And it's just, we're still just building a background is all I'm doing here. And I don't, I'm not worried about <clears throat> being exact. I just, I don't want to fight the whole napkin. So I want to make sure I cut off enough. And then I'm going to hide it over here. I love this napkin. I love, well, I, let's not be silly. I love every napkin that comes my way and then some. But I do really like the patterned ones like this that give you like a solid background. I love that. Yeah, so that's kind of the idea with all of these pieces. We made some ephemera pieces last Monopoly Monday and we mounted them on pockets or with pockets already. They're not in the book. I'm doing it different than I've ever done before. Normally, I would just, um, when I would make a book, I would put the pages in and then I would build my ephemera page by page. But with the Monopoly board, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to go about it. And so I decided we would do, we did the book, we put it together. And since then we've been working on ephemera. And then when I think, hi, when I think we have enough pieces, then we're gonna go back to the book and put it all together. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I don't do it that way. <laughs> Never have. Okay, let me set my glue here. Let's see, do I have, I don't think I have any kind of sanding device here, so we will just be trimming. Do you guys do that every time you sit down? It's like when you're wrapping presents for Christmas. I mean, what do you have to keep track of? Oh, I'm so glad you got it. I'm so glad you got it. You need, if you're wrapping presents, right, you need scissors and tape, paper, and a pen, right? And maybe some gift tags. You know, if I'm doing Christmas, I've got it all pulled out in the floor, and then I am wrap, 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 wrapping, right? Layer after layer after layer. And I can't ever find whatever piece I need. Every time I use the pen, I lose it. Every time I set the scissors down, I can't find them the next time whatever it is. Okay, so I just trim that off. And now we have it. I think you can see a little bit there. You can still see the book page um, or the dictionary page coming through. And I, I'm glad we can. Sherry, you too. I am so glad. <laughs> oh, good, Wendy. Oh, good. <laughs> I tell you, is that not the craziest thing that any other day you could kind of keep track, but not all the time. Okay, I'm gonna take and do a little bit of inking now and kind of age this entire background up. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down the sides and just do a little inking around the edges. I'm super excited. Hopefully it's normal. Let's say it's normal. If enough of us agree it's normal, doesn't that make it normal anyway? But I tell you what, it is so frustrating. And so every time I sit down, no matter what I need to craft with, it's not right where I thought it was. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of ink it all over. What's really fun about doing um, a tissue paper or a napkin, um, it even is a perfect use for these back plies of the napkin because it stays very transparent when you glue it. <laughs> Mischievous pixies coming in to do it. Um, and we'll do one of those with the napkin ply um, before we're done. We'll do one with that because it's really transparent. And you can also kind of leave it wrinkly on purpose, um, which it gives it a neat texture. So you can kind of work pretty hard to make it flat um, which I did. I made this one pretty flat. Or you can kind of wrinkle it up. And then we still have all of our information here on the card. So we can decide whether the visible part, if we want it to be, you know, Monopoly standard, or do we want to have it be Monopoly fun and then go in. So let me grab some, some cashola over here. <laughs> and there's some pink and white money. You know, Monopoly Monday, money comes in. Um, every denomination is a different color. I'm going to trim this down and just get this wide white border off 
um, it's a lot to ink when I'm going to wind up tearing it up anyway. So let's trim it down. My goal for this Monopoly Monday book is that we use very little, um, very few elements that do not belong to the game. Hi, Jenny. How are you today? Um, so that is kind of my goal. And uh, so we really are going to limit ourselves in using the things that are here um, in the game. And I'm just going to ink this before I work with it. And that way, when I tear it, it won't matter so much. Because this whole thing would cover our whole card. So we don't want the whole things. Oh, I'm so glad you got them. Okay, so I just inked up. Here's our white. You can see the difference. Um, is it really? See, I think that would be a really smart security method um, to have it in different colors. American money is pretty boring in the world standards. <laughs> okay, do I look and tear or do I just tear it? I think we're just going to tear it. I'm going to try not to look. Okay, let's see. That may be a little, a little too much. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think it's too much. But they do say that American money is more um, easily um, copied because it is not as colorful as other countries' money. And I would agree with that. If you've traveled much of the world at all, um, you would see that that is true. Okay, so now we have our little... <laughs> We have glue all over our fingers and we have a little bit of the money and we could do like a jaggedy thing. I put the other one here, but I think we'll save it. I think we'll save this for another one. So let me ink that little torn edge before my ink dries up. And then we need something else. And I think all of these community chest cards, man, they're really thick. Um, they have different different. My goodness, you have a hard time. <laughs> These, um, this brand, UHU, is some of the best quality glue sticks. Um, I just almost will not use a glue stick um, because of that. So, but I do find that this one is, this brand, <laughs> this little guy, it says, how to fix it. Um, I'm trying to look for one that kind of goes with our one dollar bill and the property is Indiana Avenue. Let's see. This one's getting hauled off. This is a guy in his stripes. <laughs> this one is way too big, but he's kind of funny sleeping there at his having a smoke on his desk. How old is this game if it even has any kind of a smoking uh, picture to it? but we're gonna use it. So I'm just gonna trim. I don't fussy cut, y'all. I just don't. No coin envelopes. All right, so let if you'll send me a message, I am just now, um, so our big sale is Friday at 2 p.m. Central at Mama P's place um, this time. If you'll send me a message, remind me because I will put together a package. I was gonna do, um, a bundle that had those brown paper sacks with the clear, there's a whole bunch of them sitting right here by me. These that we made the shaker book covers in front of, um, send me a reminder and I will make sure that there are some coin envelopes in those bundles this time. Cause I get out here to put together bundles of all of my treasures. And sometimes I can't remember. <laughs> But if you'll send me a reminder, for sure. If there, honestly, let me just say this right up front. If there's something you need or want in the paper crafting world um, and you can't seem to find it or whatever, um, always send me a message because I have so much stuff. Too central. Now, let me tell you that I will be home alone for the sale and it, if, Lest something weird happens, a grandbaby will be here with me. Um, so it may be a little slower sale than we've gotten accustomed to um, because, because it'll be me and a newborn, right? A four-month-old baby in the house. I missed a little corner here on our money. So let me just get that real quick. 
make sure it's stuck down. I am going to use my liquid glue on this card only because it's thicker and heavier. So, yeah, two o'clock Friday afternoon, big sale. I have, I have, <laughs> I have a couple of thousand yards of old new stock lace and uh, trim that will be in the sale and we'll be selling it in lots just like we did last time. So that will be there and um, all of the regular stuff. I have map packages still from the last time. I have a lot of different textile bundles I don't have put together yet. I'm really hoping to get those put together. Um, I don't have a lot of finished books this month and that's okay. Um, we'll sell them whenever I finish them. So I have this circus. Well, you'll, you'll get to see her Friday because there's no way we'll make it through a whole sale without without her deciding she needs to be held <laughs> a little while. So I am good with that if you guys are okay with that. And we'll put her to work. Everybody thinks they work around here anyway. So look at our cute little just altered card. And we haven't added one thing that is not um, from our Monopoly game. I would like to find a word. And like this one has dividend, but it's really small. So I think... <laughs> well, you come in whenever you can, and like I said, if there's something in particular you're looking for, um, let me know. I also wanted to do some preview pictures, but you guys, I'm just falling way behind here these days. I'm not getting, um, I'm just not getting there. <laughs> I'm trying to get my new schedule under my belt, and I'm just not getting there. So there you go. How about... This one has waterworks. What about if we just cut works out of there because it kind of goes with our card plan. And mm, we also have it over here, but I think I like just the works over here. So let's trim this out. Like I said, sheer determination to use what we have in our game. Because I want you guys to be encouraged that you can go find something anything really and you can create a book around it um or you can just create and have fun with it um okay so this is the top i keep looking because i don't want to get it wrong and i think we'll put this down here let me put some ink on it since it's white um so let's see what else have we been working on playing cards to make the artist trading cards or to make the little books with I have um, bundles of 24 cards that I think I already said once that uh, my 11-year-old daughter has put together. So they're supposed to be two sets of 12. Oh, Candyland would be fun, Dana. Um, but if it's not exactly that, Grace, <laughs> Grace for my merit, Grace. Um, no, somebody asked about the spine of the book and I set it down and I'll find it in a second. When I do, I'll show you. I built a spine for it. So we cut the game board up, okay? And there is our fun little altered card. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. You could go way beyond this, depending on what you might want to add to it, want to add to it, um, of course, right? So if you wanted to add some fun string or, um, some things like that. I'm still trying to figure out. I'm going to have to put Dear Sweet Husband on it. I want to try to find a way that we can put holes in the little houses and the hotels um, and use them as charms. That is my goal. And wouldn't that just be cute when we do? So I have a teeny tiny drill. I may try that. I also have my little soldering iron, and I may try that. Um, but I won't. Hi, Katana. I really don't want to put you guys through watching that because I don't know how successful I'll be. But that would be super cute on these to just hang a little dangle. I want to figure out the same idea so that we can use some of the game pieces. Um, and so some of them, like this one here, the horse, we could sew him on there, which would be kind of fun. Um, and that might be the answer for some of them. Um, the ship, that would be fun. I think we could sew him on. I don't want to try to glue it because 
I know it's going to pop back off, don't you? This one also, a couple of them had little spots. Can you see that? Where it's almost got a little link. So with a jump ring or a bulb pin, this one could be, that one could be actually attached. Of course, somebody tell me where my bulb pins are and you won't be surprised to know that they're sitting right over there out of reach. So that's the idea. And we will add a charm soldering thing. I thought about that. Um, I was trying to investigate the kind of metal that these are and they are a pewter, but not a very high quality pewter and pewter melts super easy. So I'm just a little bit afraid, <laughs> just a little bit afraid, not too much afraid that it might um, melt my pieces before I can get um, a jump ring melted to them. Oop. I only got part of my string through. I just love charm, Sherry. I love what they add to a project. I love that we get the dimension with them, um, as, you know, and pretty simple. So here's just, because this one had the little thing on it, we could just put it through there. And then, <laughs> you guys, <sighs> just laugh with me, okay, as I dig around here for things that I always have right at my hand. But then you can see how it would make a cute little dangle attachment right there on the corner of the card. And what I don't have here is either one of my awls or ice picks that I use or a hole puncher. It's probably with the bulb pins. I have 8,000 other things here, but we don't need 8,000 other things. So I will add that, but I love that little idea. E6000 might work. It might work. They're kind of heavy, you know? I think I would be really tempted to try it with um, um, just a big old blob of hot glue, you know, and kind of sit it in there. I do too. The other pieces um, are here and are, like I said, the horse guy, you could probably sew him on, but he's got this big old base. The iron is really simple because you could just tie him on. The shoe, I don't know. See, then we, the rest of the pieces, they just don't have a real clear idea. So if you guys have one, I think the thimble would be adorable if we could drill a hole in it and then we could string it like a bell. And then Mr. Scotty Dog, he doesn't really have any. They are hollow. Can you see that? I think you can. So, hmm. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that part out. Okay, let's work on another card. Let's work on another card. And this time, let's just put some Monopoly money right on the back to cover it. So let's grab, let's go high dollar and do a big green 20. <laughs> and I'm just gonna line it up along one side and leave this here. And then we're gonna put something else along this side. The, the chance or the um, community chest cards are the right width, but we would need one that had, oh, do not, this is perfect. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Do you guys use that saying in your life? We do. Um, I don't think I will for these because they're gonna be tags in our book. Um, when somebody in our house wants to do something and the answer is clearly no, sometimes we say, do not pass go, do not collect $200. <laughs> and we don't even play Monopoly. But, you know, it's one of those iconic things that has stuck over the years. So let's trim and then figure out how we want to decorate this one. Okay. I'm still looking for the book cover. Here it is. I set this one. So somebody was asking, here is the book cover. This is what it looks like. So this is the Monopoly board. We opted to put the actual game board on the inside of the cover because we're going to decorate. Then we added two. This is one of the pocket things. Remember that? We just kept building last week. And I went ahead and stuck it in there. It has two sets of pages or signatures. And then this is the back cover. Um, I took a piece of the game board and that is the spine 
and then we just used a strip of fabric to glue it all together okay so this is the full size book and then I'm half ashamed to tell you that I never have put pages like I promised in the mini book but we had enough left just using half of the game board <clears throat> to make the full size book and a mini book so we will be adding two signatures of pages in here as well and we'll probably make a little pocket book not your grandma's purse but you know a book full of pockets <laughs> in this one did your grandma call her purse a pocket book or did i just age myself again my grandma called her purse her pocket book she would say anybody seen my pocket book and we all knew that she had lost her purse i've got this fun kind of bright green ribbon and we do have, I mean, it's teal. I, I know it's not green, green. I don't have any green, green sitting here and I like this. So let's take a little bit of this. Yes, they did call it a pocketbook. I don't know why. There's probably some great historical meaning to the words like, you know, men had stuff in their pockets. I don't know. I don't know. There's trivia for next week. Where did that uh, word come from? When did women start calling their purses pocketbooks? All right, so I also don't have my hot glue tool on. This will work fine. This bookmaker's glue would work or Fabri-Tac will work and set this on because we're going to put stuff over it, everything. Yes, your grandma did too? Oh, good. My grandma always did. Let me get my pocketbook, she'd say, before we took off wherever we were going. Okay. So then we have our, our money just covering that, and then the do not pass go, do not collect $200. And now that we kind of have the base down. Now let's ink the whole mess up. I'm just using the vintage photo. It's, it's the only one I have sitting out here. Maybe, I don't know. My grandma also um, notoriously said wash. She gotta go wash the dishes um, or she washed her hair. And instead of rinsing it, she would wrench it. She would put a wrench in her hair, yes, a Devon, yeah. Or the, um, my husband's family called their couch a real long word, Davenport. Did you guys ever do that? Ooh, she had one of the straw purses. I remember those. I do, I do. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm inking on both sides of this ribbon, and I think it'll help it kind of have a, <laughs> um, a little different look because it'll kind of grunge the edges of that ribbon but leave the middle of it a little bit lighter at least that's what i'm thinking i i never i'm never sure i'm right until we actually do something i'm sitting here you guys and i i'm losing track but look at these do these look like the same thing to you or not your grandma called her couch a davenport Yes, it is. My grandma was from the St. Louis area. She actually lived in Cuba, Missouri, um, but she would wash it and wrench it. Yeah. These are both vintage photo, Tim Holtz, Distress Ink, the same thing. An icebox. Yes, we called it an icebox. It, they were just interchangeable words um, in our family for sure. For sure. <laughs> Looking for that silly icebox. Yeah. Um. So we've got this card that is the same piece of this one, but I'm not, I'm not feeling adding something else here, but I want it putting that here. I want something that goes all the way across at least two. I don't want to lose the words. <laughs> Where is that silly ice box? Spent half your childhood searching for it. We have more of the waterworks here. We might, might be really fun. It's, we have the mortgage for um, 75 bucks. Are you kidding? Well, my grandma lived in Cuba from about 1940 until she died. Um, and then my mom lived in Cuba near her mom for a long, long time. Oh, Mindy, you're fine, hon. You come whenever you can and we'll be thrilled to have you. And I lived there off and on when my mom lived there because she was there when I was in college. And then um, I still have some cousins that live in Cuba. Cuba is, is stomping home ground for us. Um, I remember so many weekends going to Grandma Bert's house. That's my grandma's name. That's what we called her. 
um, and uh, hanging out there because that she was the matriarch. So her house, oh shoot, was the place to be. I dropped that all the way to the floor, you guys. Excuse me. I'm going to stand up and get it. The real miracle is that I could find this instead of every other piece of paper on the floor, if you know what I mean. So I think we'll put this, should I trim it to where it stays? I don't know if we wanna go over the ribbon or not. There's enough card to go over the ribbon and come to the edge, or we can trim it and kind of center it, or we can make it cockeyed. Cockeyed is sometimes, it's not meant to be. Did you see that? You went to the rodeo in Rolla. Rolla was the, the big town for us. So I am not picking that card up again, just so you know. <laughs> if it falls to the floor twice, it does not not want to be here. So I'm going to do the mortgage value of this one and try again. <laughs> try again. Belong to a campground out near there. There are a lot of beautiful areas and river ways not too far out of that area. There sure are. <laughs> Her name was Bertha. My grandma's name was Bertha as well. And we called her Grandma Bert. All of the kids in my generation did. Um, and then the next generation, her great grandkids came around and one of them could not get Grandma Bert to come out, but he got just Bert and it stuck. And then here was this incredible matriarch in our family, deserving of all the respect and honor that she was due and we all called her Bert and it, it caught and all of a sudden all of her grandkids we quit calling her grandma Bert and we called her Bert her adult kids called her Bert it just kind of became funny and it became funny both of your grandmas were Bertha's now we were um we were kind of slow to have our children I had some health issues right after we got married I that was when I had cancer the first time and um, so we were delayed a little bit in having kids. And so when we finally decided to, we were gonna name them after their grandparents, which was pretty good. The dad's names were Richard, my dad, and James was my husband's dad's name. So, you know, those aren't too bad, but the grandmother's names were Bertha. Well, my mom's name was Paulette, and then her name was Bertha. And then my husband's mom's name was Dorothy. So um, I always tell my daughter to be thankful she was the younger born child after we kind of got past all of that silliness. Okay, so here we have another little altered card. I would love to add a couple of more elements here and there, but sticking true to the Monopoly thing, I'm just not sure what we would do. We could take some of the smaller pieces. Why not? Let's see what happens. Cuba, yeah, Cuba, Missouri is where we're talking about. I would love to go to the country of Cuba. Um, and it was always funny when I was a kid in school, I would say we were going to Cuba for the weekend, which meant going to see my grandma in Cuba, Missouri. Your mom's name was Dorothy. They called my husband's mom Dottie. That's what we all called her. And, and the kids at school always thought I was going to the country of Cuba. But we're talking about Cuba, Missouri, a small town in the middle of nowhere really real close to the Mark Twain National Forest is what it's close to so I'm just gonna trim off um, oh hers was Dorothy Jean and I think Dorothy Jean or Dorothy Jane were very much the norm her names so I think it'd be fun to have just a few little pieces to add to this but I'm, I'm just I'll always be honest I'm not I'm not loving this I'm not loving the 500. I think it's too big. And the little one is too little. I think maybe we need these guys. Maybe we need to pull these two guys going off to jail. I don't know where they're going to fit either. I don't know. You thought the same thing. Oh, good, Kathy. Good. Great minds. Great minds. We do have, let me cut these two guys out. And we do have the words here that say go directly to jail. But we're getting quite a few words built up and so I don't know that we want any more words your aunt was Dorothy May so my oldest child was a boy and so he we couldn't choose um, in my family Bertha Marie I'm trying to remember what my grandma's middle name was I think she had one my mother did not have one um, 
my grandma named her Paulette and did not give her a middle name, which was, uh, I always thought was really interesting. I thought she got gypped, got gypped out of a name. <laughs> Different time zone. Yeah, my husband um, goes back to work tomorrow. He's a school bus driver in his retirement. That's what he chose to do. And he's actually going to cook for us tonight. So he said it was his last night to be the kitchen guy. I'm like, you go, man. I never get in the way of a guy that wants to get in the kitchen. Never. <laughs> never, ever. Okay. So I still want something across the top of this. And we could make a tab. Ooh, let's make a tab. What do we want to make our tab out of? We could make it with a piece of this money would be really cute. Your husband didn't have... See, I never... My mom was the only one I ever knew that did not have a middle name, but she sure didn't. Um, I don't know. All right, I'm just going to put a little glue on two sides of this, just a little bit, and we're just going to make a little tab right here in the middle of this. And that will finish up its little bit of a decoration. Hey, hi, we are working on ephemera for our Monopoly Monday, our Monopoly game board um, book that we're working on. So your mom didn't have a middle name either. See, and like I said, my grandma did. Um, and my mom was the first child, which, you know, if you were going to give up and get tired and quit. So here is our second one. <laughs> here is our first one. I don't have the charm attached because... I just, the fact that I'm sitting here without something that will poke a hole is just beyond believable to me. But we're going to put the little ship charm on this one. And it's just one of the property cards out of the Monopoly game. And then this one, we did the do not pass go, do not collect $200, go directly to jail under here. And it's on the back of North Carolina Avenue. So we are using the pieces of our game. Now, I had another thought, but I need a little bit of, we're going to pull from the stash. Hi, Linda, how are you? Um, to do this one a little bit. I've got some, these are just little decorative papers. I think these were a Timu gift from a friend. Um, but I thought we might look and see if there was something, oh, it's right here. Remember how we did some of the newspaper pieces? I thought we might make a little fold out book with a couple of these. <gasps> Number nine. Whoa. Whoa, you're still working? I'm doing good. I babysat today over at my daughter's house, and um, I am home from that. And enjoy it. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm eyeballing because my scissors are handy and my paper cutter's not, and it's not anything we have to be all that exact about. Okay, so I just cut a strip of paper the same height as my little cards, okay? And now let me think just a second how we wanna put it together. So we want to kind of accordion fold, and I'm just using the card for a guide, and I'm folding my paper so it's just barely on the inside. And I'm matching the bottom line of the paper, not the one I cut, because we know that's not straight, um, but the one that came from the manufacturer, which has a better chance of being straight. And so I'm just going to accordion fold that. And now we just have this, okay? And then we want to attach to here, right? Something that will fold out and open. And we can put our, we can just mount our covers right like this. And so we just open up this far, or we can take some washi tape or another piece of paper because it'll be like a binding and we can put a little binding strip here and then it will open all the way. So let's do that. I'm just going to use another scrap of this paper and this time I'm going to measure my height the other way. I can't imagine. We, um, before we, let's see, two houses ago, um, we lived in the middle of Amish country in our community and our neighbors had 17 or 18 kids and most of their kids had gone on to have 17 or 18 kids so when they had their grandkids over it was something it's like a school picnic to us right 
Okay, so I'm just folding this in a little V, okay? And it may be too wide. I want to look at it before I go too crazy here, okay? And then whichever one we decide to use, let's see, maybe the doctor, because it has a nice little broad spot there. So I'm just lining up one edge, and I'm just going to put the little V on top like this, okay? And it's a little bit too wide, see that? So I'm gonna trim it down just a hair. And we're gonna use it just like any other mounting strip, okay? That's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's a lot, a lot of yeah. And they, um, they were the matriarchs currently and patriarchs of their clan and about five, five of their children um, lived right right on our road. We lived at the end of a gravel road. If our electricity went out, we were just out of luck because we were the only ones down there that needed it. And, uh, and so they had somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 grandchildren, 150. So when they all come over. Okay, so on the back, you can see what I did. I just mounted that little strip and now our front cover looks like this and it opens up completely to show our accordion and now we're going to do the same thing on the back so I'm going to take my little strip um my mama lived with us down there and at the time she lived with us she was in her mid 80s and she was still in very good physical condition at that time and uh she would walk down the gravel road and Miss Elizabeth was our neighbor's name this one too is just a little bit wide on this side, so I'm just gonna trim it off while we chat. And Miss Elizabeth would come out and visit with my mom when she saw her coming down the road. And Miss Elizabeth, she was crippled up. Um, she had a very hard time getting around at all. And she would hobble out to the road to visit with my mom. And one day she asked my mom how old she was. And my mom said, I'm, I think she was 86 at the time. She said, she said I'm 86 years old. And Elizabeth was like, what? Okay, so I've just trimmed that down to where it doesn't cover the picture. Oh, we had my mom and my mother-in-law with us for several years. It was a delightful time. And uh, so here's Miss Elizabeth walking with her walking stick and just not hardly able to get around at all. And my mom said, well, since you asked me, how old are you? And mom was thinking that Elizabeth had to be about her age just because of her physical condition. Miss Elizabeth was like 63 and her body was just beat, just beat down. She was the sweetest lady. Um, the Amish people of course are religious, but they don't talk about their religion. And uh, so when I would visit with them, I never wanted to bring it up. I didn't want to be rude if they didn't want to talk about it. Um, but one time Miss Elizabeth said, you know, a, a house is not a home without Jesus in it, right? <laughs> and I thought, okay, we can talk. We can talk. Okay, so now I'm just folding that back together. Okay, and now this is our cute little um, expando book. So it would open this way and this way and this way and still have the back cover. Okay, and then if we just leave it like this, if we don't seal the whole edge, it would also then open the back way. <laughs> I know, and they work so hard. I mean, can you imagine that she did clothes by hand and hung on the line for that many people? I mean, gosh, I can't even. Okay, so we could, now let me just stop here and tell you that if you wanted to have this finished, right where it stayed together right here, all you would do is take another strip, just cut another strip and put another wrap and put a good amount of glue right here and you would catch these, okay? And you could also use a piece of double-sided tape on here, but I'm gonna leave it disconnected because I like that it, it flips out both ways, okay? And then we can decide if we wanna, we'll decide when we get ready to put it in the book. If we just wanna use it to tuck in, where it would come out and you would have like journal. I know, Christina, and their houses, I mean, I just, I cannot. They cook three meals a day because the men worked, you know, worked, worked, worked hard, worked. And uh, anyway, I can't even imagine. But yeah, 
They were so sweet to us though. World's class neighbors. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim. I love this really pretty little edge. I was gonna give it a fancier name. It's just a cute edge. And it would be fun to just use as a little decorative spot on our book, but maybe in a different color. We got every color of the rainbow here in our money bucket. So we could do a blue or a white, as opposed to, there is a light yellow. The gold really matches, but maybe we would prefer a contrasting color. What do you think? I don't know, can you imagine? Oh my gosh, and they can cook. Out of necessity, they can cook. We had, uh, so we actually owned a little seven acre farm, but it was in a kind of a corner of their property. So their property went all the way around ours. And we had a little pond that we stocked and they were so, I mean, like I said, they were wonderful neighbors. They could have come and fished our pond out anytime and we wouldn't have been any of the wiser. We were never home. I like that. I like just the little blue edge on there. Yeah, they do, Christina, they do. Um, but when it would rain real hard, our pond would overflow into the creek and they would come lining up when it would overflow and they would be just on their side of the fence um, with nets catching the fish that washed out of our pond. <laughs> they, the kids would come down and do that. They thought that was the best fun. They thought that was the bomb and we didn't mind. Never mind one bit. So there are just our cute, I like that. I like the little edge of the money on there. And then I'm just going to trim it off. And again, we could go just as far as we wanted to, to decorate that up. Um, we can ink it to age it a little bit. And I think that would be, I don't know. I always complain when I start inking because once you start inking, yeah. They did, they had all of their rooms were in kind of a ward, you know, so all the boys stayed in one giant room and the girls stayed in another. Um, they would, we were not allowed to attend their social events, um, weddings or those kind of things. Um, we wouldn't have been invited and that was fine, but they would invite you down the night before a wedding so you could see it and you were welcome to bring your camera if you wanted to and take some photos and so on several occasions i went and um took photos pre-wedding of the setup and wow it was impressive they would completely empty the downstairs um, portion of the home and just fill it with dining tables like the dining room the kitchen the living room whatever the downstairs was was just lined with wooden tables that were set to the nines, guys. I mean, fabric, tablecloth, and napkins, and beautiful mixed match china, things we would pay a fortune for today. And they would have 100, 125 places set in the downstairs of their house. And then um, if you were having a, a good wedding, you would have um, fried chicken or something like that that would be fried. And so one of the barns would be dedicated for the fryers. And they would have those propane, like turkey fryers we call them, just lined up like 15 or 20 of them. And certain male relatives would be um, on cooker duty and they would be out there to cook the, the meat for the wedding. And they would have dinner all in the house together. It was so neat, so neat. All right, and then we could do the same thing here on our plain white just to match everything up. Just come in and ink all the grooves. We are going to have such fun stuff to put in this book when we get ready. And I think next Monday that'll be the goal is that we start flipping some pages. Hello, welcome. And start deciding how we want to put all these things in the book. I'd like to finish it in the next couple of weeks. I'm dedicated to only doing it on Mondays. So it's just taking a little longer and I'm excited to do the cover because I think it's going to be really fun. Okay, so here we have our little flippy book and it would go either way. If you open it this way, then you're going to get the newspaper type pages and we could mount some lined paper in there, but I don't think we need to. And then if you open it the other direction, you would have our inked plain white pages. So there we go. We have two altered 
um, Monopoly playing cards that we could do. And then we're gonna add, I'm gonna add the charm. I don't think, I keep looking at this, wondering if my poker needle will poke a hole in this. I'm liable to poke a hole in me. No, look at that, it went right through. How silly. So let's go ahead and hang that charm. Of course, somebody wanna tell me where I dropped that here in my little bitty mess? I didn't hear it hit the floor, so I think we're safe it didn't go to the floor. But of course, now that I'm ready to put it on, I won't be able to find it. Huh. Maybe it's in the little plate. Yep, there it is. So let's go ahead and put our little ship piece through. I'm going to, since the needle poked through so good, let's just try to put the thread through with it. And see what we get here. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Gee, I should have thought of that a long time ago. And then we're just gonna leave our little ship to dangle there. I like that length pretty good. So I'm just going to tie a knot on this back side and put it down there close to the card. And that's going to be our plan. I also have coming up in the sale, I forgot to tell you, tons of buttons. Um, both we're going to do um, scoops of loose buttons and then we're also going to do cards of buttons. I have wooden spools, um, thread spools, old, old antique thread spools. And we're gonna have some of these in the sale. And we're, my goal this week is to make something with some of those before our sale. There we go. Now we got our little ship on there. I like that. I like that a lot. And I like this one. And I love our little flippy book. So if you want something to do between now and the next time, I think we need to make some kind of little concoction of money. Um, I think <laughs> you need some of those. All right, well, let me know. Um, I think it would be really fun. I don't have magnets, but I think, well, shoot, we're sitting here a minute. Let's just play because it doesn't have to be forever. I think just doing a bundle of money, the sale will be this Friday afternoon, two o'clock central. So three Eastern, um, a forewarning, my granddaughter will be here and I will be on my own. So it may be a little slower sale than we've had in the past, but I won't keep you too long. We don't waste any time <laughs> at the sale. They make me nervous, so I just I got to get it done. I got to do the sales because I got to earn my ability to stay home and do this. But anyway, um, so it'll be this Friday. I did not see them at my store. I wish I had. I was at a Dollar Tree yesterday. The next time I go, I'm going to look because I want to get one. Hey, Tammy, the mini Monopoly games at the Dollar Tree and see what they look like inside. But how about just making, you know, you think like a money clip? You could. We could also just run our money right through the sewing machine and make just a little tiny mini book again, and it would just be money pages. There is so much, there is so much of this. We've got to have some ideas for it. Um, oh, thank you. It is the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done is to run a sale because up until I started this, I never thought anything I made or collected was worth anything um, to anybody but me. So um, they really are nerve wracking, but I'm always so, so thankful. Um, so we could just make a belly band for some money, just taking a piece of what we have here. And then here's a little piece of the card for the back. And then this would just be a slip. Oh yeah, send me a picture. I would love that. Oh, I may have to go find one. Like I need one more thing, y'all. Um, but um, I think that would be super fun. I need to see the Dollar Tree Monopoly game to see what we could do with that. You know, when I did that Dr. Seuss book, every bit of that came from the Dollar Tree. All that Dr. Seuss ephemera. And then I just took a Dr. Seuss book and we altered it. So maybe just a slip in slot like this where we make the little pocket. Might as well put it together while I'm sitting here. Let me see if I can make it fit just by trimming every bit. So many possibilities with this stuff. Absolutely. And it's so much fun. And I picked up this board game at my thrift store and it was like $3. I've got nothing to lose here. Nothing to lose at all. Um, and we will have had, besides glue, very, very little else invested. So you could go to your thrift store Go to your Dollar Tree, pick up a Monopoly game. I chose Monopoly because of all the pieces. Ooh, yes, I know it should not be that hard, right? It should be a little more natural. So look, just that quick, 
we just put this little piece off of the white card back there. It wrapped around to here. Um, oh, you got your sewing machine fixed. I, I so want to sit at the sewing machine this week. I've got a project I really want to do before Friday. I just don't know that I'm going to get it. And it is two degrees cooler than Hades out here. Um, and now this would be perfect to slip on a paper clip. Hang on a second. I do have some giant paper clips here in this basket. In my basket here um, of assorted goodies. Oh, here's our stuff. Some of our things from last time. Here. Okay. So I have these gigantic paper clips. We've kind of laughed. Yes, the Scrabble board would be a great cover. And you know, you don't have to, Scrabble doesn't have a ton of um, pieces besides the letters, but how many things would be so easily to go with that? Okay, so this is too big for this, but to put this in our book or anywhere, you could just slip a regular size paper clip. I use the bigger office supply ones. And then we could just clip this on. Um, and then you've got just all this money um, to play with, we could put a little tag on it and then it would be a little flippy thing, right? So last week we built these layered tags um, and journaling spots, right? And we're gonna use some of our library pockets to put those in there, right? So we made several of those and then we've got what we made today and we'll be ready to go on. Um, so put your thinking caps on. My homework is to figure out if I can put some holes in these and how we can work with the rest of our little playing pieces. And next week, we're going to get the book open and we're going to start putting this bin together, um, the book together, and, uh, and start seeing how it's all going to come out and what more we need to do. All right. Now, I told you in my little makeup thing, I don't have any events this week, but my goal is to be live every day because there are some things I just really want to do. I've got some fall stuff. Um, I've got the fall crafting itch. I've got a few things I would really like to do. Um, and so I will plan to be live every day. Uh, tomorrow, the baby's supposed to be here at my house. And so I will go live when she takes a nap, but I will, um, send you a warning like I always do. Okay. You guys have a great night. Thanks for hanging with me. I hope you're having fun. Get to playing and I'll see you guys soon sometime tomorrow. Bye.